Today's video is sponsored by Cometeer. I didn't choose the scene. The scene chose me. Rawr. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy. And welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today, we've got some brief international drag news to cover, including some drama between India Farah and Miss Fierce Alicious. Then we'll be grabbing our frequent flyer punch cards to take our third trip across the pond in just 12 short months. You okay, hon? I know I'm not. 10 months ago, we got crystallized with Crystal Versace crowning her the winner of season three. Six months ago, we crowned Blue High Dranger the queen of the world after winning RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world. And today we're going back, 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 back again for RuPaul's Drag Race UK season four. And Miss RuPaul is back, 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 back again in the world of Wonder Green screen basement wearing her white up due to announce the cast. Some things never change. First up, hallelujah, we've got some fun news. Them.us has an article out reporting Shangela will be the first Drag Race contestant to appear on Dancing with the Stars. Well, the American version that is. Courtney Act, of course, did the Australian version a couple years ago. Her dance partner will be Gleev Savchenko, apparently his 10th overall season on the series. And Miss Shandy will be competing against the likes of Charlie D'Amelio, which should be interesting. I have literally no idea how that show works, by the way, but if anyone could get me to watch a show, it's Miss Shanji. So an extra big hallelujah and congrats to Shangela. Now let's touch base in Canada. Miss Fierce Alicious found herself in the middle of some drama a couple of days ago when she was sabotaged by one of the fans in a live stream she was doing. Someone falsely, I will preface this with, wrote to Miss Fierce saying that India Farah had called her untalented and said she was undeserving of her spot in the final four. How do I feel about India Farah calling you untalented and undeserving of being in the final? She's talking all that with oh, a yeah. dirty mouth She's and her hot Breath. And news of this spread around places like Twitter pretty quickly. Eve 6000 jumped in, allegedly writing, not asterisk saying Fierce is untalented and undeserving of top four, B, you were undeserving of being on Drag Race ever. And you're apparently undeserving of a toothbrush as well. And if y'all are totally out of the loop of why both of them are allegedly talking about this person's mouth, I linked a video to that drama saga in the description of this video. And India Fira apparently got wind of this pretty quickly because she on her Instagram story posted a DM several that she had sent directly to Miss Fierce to clear the air. She wrote, what is this that you're saying? What have I said about you? And please show me the receipt before I take this publicly. Fierce replied, I was on a live and someone said that you said I'm quote, untalented and undeserving of being in the top four. India replied to that saying, I don't even know you, never heard of you, nor have I watched or know anyone on this season of CDR. That's BS and ridiculous that you believe someone said something that I supposedly said. Adding, wow, and all because someone commented on your live video, saying I said something. Wow. Wow, mom. I saw a cow, mom. Does anyone remember that? <laughs> And this all came to a pretty quick close after the two queens figured out what was going on. Miss Fierce tweeted this out. India messaged me privately and explained that she never made any comments about me. Please don't send her any hate. And good lord, messy fans stop being messy. It's not funny. That was kind of funny. It's not funny, stop it. And as a transition from international drag news and drama, <laughs> Did y'all see the tweet that Canada's Drag Race deleted this week? On the day the finale was airing, they tweeted this out. Happy hashtag Canada's Drag Race finale day. The crown is up for grabs, dot, dot, dot. Who is going to take it home? With a picture of the beautiful crown. And while this is not funny or dramatic in and of itself, the context is, may she rest in peace, the Queen of England has passed. And this was tweeted out that same day. Very unfortunate. <laughs> You can't write jokes this good. And there is, because of the Queen's passing, allegedly, some drama on the horizon. A Twitter account called TV UK Zone, which reports on the BBC's scheduling and such, tweeted out, hashtag Strictly Come Dancing, hashtag Drag Race UK, and Bake Off start dates expected to be postponed, TV Zone understands. Which again, we should take maybe with a grain of salt. This isn't coming directly from Drag Race or BBC, so stay tuned on that. And now let's get into the drag and drama of the cast announcement from Druck 4. But first, this is an iced oat milk coffee made with Cometeer. Brewers of the best and most convenient coffee ever. Here's my recipe. First, ice. A lot of ice. About six ounces of cold filtered water, a thawed Cometeer capsule from my fridge, this one is Southern Weather, by the way, a medium roast, and just a splash of extra creamy oat milk on top. It's nutty, rich, goes down smooth, and is perfect every time because Cometeer optimizes for every key variable in the brewing process, which makes delicious, flavorful coffee that's then flash frozen by a liquid nitrogen bath to lock in the flavor. And 
Comments here stays fresh. They ship frozen coffee capsules directly to your doorstep every month from some of the best bean roasters in the world, like Counterculture, Equator, and Onyx. Plus, Comments here is versatile, like me. If I want a hot cup instead, I pick a flavor from my freezer. This one is the Morning Blend by Birch, and then prep it by briefly running it under some warm tap water. I know it's ready when I shake it and I can hear the frozen puck inside. Next, I peel back the lid, add it to my cup, and pour in the hot water. Finally, just a splash of extra creamy oat milk. This Morning Blend is caramelly, chocolatey, and unbelievably smooth. You can try comments here by clicking the link in the description of this video and act fast because for a limited time, you can get 25% off your first two orders when you use code BUSSY25 at commentsHere.com. Thanks comments here for keeping me caffeinated and sponsoring today's video. Now let's check our friend counts on MySpace. First up, Danny Beard. With a queen so beardy, she named herself after it. Danny is, as she points out, the first bearded queen on Drag Race UK, though not of the Drag Race franchise. The very first trailblazer to be cast and compete in a season with a beard was Madame Madness on Drag Race Holland. Ironically though that Danny is introducing herself to the world as Danny Beard and has a beard on but the makeup that she's wearing is not in any way accentuating or highlighting the beard in fact it's hiding it which I guess I thought was a little bit of a missed opportunity for her because if that's gonna be your thing and it's not in how you meet the world I don't know it didn't really make sense but maybe she was just trying to give his versatility off the bat. She tells us her drag is about mixing club kid aesthetic with old school drag, something that when I perused her Instagram, I found she does quite well. Big hair, big body, and crazy looks. Super excited for what she's going to be doing. Danny's 29 from Liverpool, and the look she's wearing is representing the liver bird, the symbol of Liverpool. The theme, by the way, for the entire cast promo was for the queens to represent their hometown in some way, shape, or form. And how she's represented the liver bird in her drag here, I think is really interesting. I love the androgyny that she's presenting here, and she truly is giving us arts glam, campy, interesting, the colors are beautiful, and even the way she's layered the different kinds of feathers in the different blue tones to create all that beautiful texture, very, very visually stunning. And I love the hat. Danny, why so blue? This look is hot. Next up, I'm baby. Oh no, she's baby. Literally, that's her drag name. Just baby. She's 25 from South London. She describes herself as London's Afro-punk princess and spends a lot of time talking up her performance and dance skills, possibly dropping us some hints she could be the lip sync assassin of the season. When quick scroll through her Instagram and I'd believe it, every outfit she wears is danceable, performable, and girl, you know when you see that, it's over. Even the promo look that she's wearing, you know she could tear up a stage in that. I love that beautiful, very on-trend tie-dye of the blues and the whites and those deeper brown colors colors, and the strips of crystals curving and swerving all throughout her look. And did y'all notice the crystals literally hanging from her hair? Stunning. Baby even mentions they've studied musical theater, and I think she'll be a very important contrast to some of these look-focused queens that we'll get to in here just a second. But baby, 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 this look is hot. <laughs> Next up, we've got John Burr's Blonde, who's 33 and from Belfast, or Belfast, not Bell Slow. She says she's been doing drag for 14 years, longer than I've been alive, and puts herself into the fast fashion category of the drag world, continuing to describe herself as a high fashion pig. This queen is very campy, very goofy, also apparently not afraid to make fun of herself, says that if you see her in a show, you're gonna be seeing lots of crab walking, which I guess means that she can't dance very well. Her look, she says, is inspired by the beautiful fields of Northern Ireland. This is her interpretation of what a farmer would be if they were a fashionable farmer. And I went back and forth on this. I do see the Irish references here and I understand the direction she was going, but this look of what we have from our cast today is not my favorite. And I like the details of the little feather in her cap, the three leaf clover on her knee. Gotta protect those knees. And there is overall something interesting about this look, but there's also something about it I feel like is unfinished. The jacket and pants, I think need some tighter tailoring to bring in her silhouette just a little bit. Because all these oversized pieces are kind of swallowing her whole and the makeup and hair isn't really helping her either. She is but just a simple farmer. However, this look is a hat. May the luck of the Irish be with her though. Next up, Cheddar Gorgeous, who's 38 and from Manchester and describes herself as a living spectacle, a cultural icon with a drag name that references Cheddar Gorge. Learn something new every day. Cheddar Gorge, by the way, is a landmark. It's like a giant valley, essentially. Photos here for your appreciation. This is a queen I've been appreciating on Instagram for years. They have a really unique dark, artistic and intelligent approach to their drag. She checks that old soul spooky 
glamour kind of box that, for example, I would say Joe Black or even Charity Case kind of filled on their seasons. And I bring those two names up not to directly compare any of them, but rather to highlight that their drag is all very alternative to what we see from a lot of the UK queens. And we haven't seen the producers receive that alternative drag well on the UK series. So I'm a little nervous for Miss Cheddar Gorgeous. And her look in this promo shot, I absolutely adore. She's giving us Queen B, complete with some antenna atop her bald head. I think this look is very tasteful in the construction, the material selection, and even the placement of the crystals to create dimension in the bottom part of that dress skirt. In a way, it's sort of understated for how loud and impactful it actually is. I let this Queen B sting me. This look is hot. <laughs> Next up, Just May from Essex. Don't kill me for that. But you heard me right. Her name is Just May. And she has a self-proclaimed obsession with Jerry Halliwell. She also says that she is the premier Jerry Halliwell impersonator. Or maybe this actually is just Jerry Halliwell. It's not. Her Meet the Queen's interview kind of left me wondering why she didn't just name herself just Jerry. Because I feel like I left it knowing more about Jerry Halliwell than I did just May. And her Instagram doesn't provide many more clues to who this queen truly is. Regardless, I am interested to see what her drag is, though beyond just making jokes about Jerry Halliwell. Because the actual look she's wearing doesn't do a whole lot to explain to the world who she is either. She's wearing the flag of Essex, which is just a red background with three swords on it. It's campy and funny in a very dry situation satirical way, as is her personality. She has this kind of flat delivery that says everything I'm saying is a joke and nothing is serious. In this look, as a look, I don't mind. I just think it's missing a bit of polish. For example, I'm not so sure the wig she's wearing is doing a whole lot to expand upon the flag that she has loosely recreated on her body. And some of the details, like the actual swords just sewn onto her waist, look a little arts and craftsy. So I'm gonna leave this look with just a rock. Next up, she's ready for her close-up. It's Starlet. And she's another, air quotes, look queen, who I've been admiring on Instagram for a couple of years now. Seriously, the technical precision with which she does her makeup is insane. She describes herself as polished pinup, which is evident in the look she is wearing today, and tells us that she is from Johannesburg, South Africa. But nowadays she resides in Surrey. And this look she has on is simple, elegant, gorgeous. It's gold as an homage to her hometown, Johannesburg, which is known colloquially as the City of Gold. And I think she very much has captured a refined aesthetic here. I'm getting the Marilyn Monroe references. And as a nice surprise, I might add, seeing every detail of this look is thought out and perfected just like her makeup is. This look is absolutely 24 karat golden hat. <laughs> However, I will say, she was a little demure in her interview. And Drag Race is often about being the loudest or funniest one in the room. Girl, you gotta play to the cameras. And because of that, I am a little nervous for Miss Starlet. But I hope she finds her spotlight. Next up, Sminty Drop, who is 23 and from Lancashire. I hope I said that right. Y'all bully me every time I say that city name. And if I didn't, get over it. And Sminty probably tells us in her interview she is from the house of Kendall, of Gothy Kendall, the biggest loser of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, went home first three years ago. And this queen, I am absolutely stoked to see hit the runway. Their Instagram looks are incredible, jaw-dropping, gorgeous, very alien supermodel, as she herself describes her drag is. She's gotta be, what, 10 foot tall in drag? Her appearance is so striking. And she's not just tall with great looks, but if you check out the Instagram captions, you'll see that she actually has made quite a few of these looks that she models. So let's focus on her promo look today. This is scary, sexy, interesting, weird. And I love the different textures that she's contrasting here, that shiny PVC on her legs versus that almost bug abdomen like bodice that she's wearing. She's kind of giving me drag Beetleborg mixed with a vampire bat in some ways. And obviously the way that hair swoops with the red crystals matching the shoes. I mean, this look from head to toe is absolutely breathtaking. And of course, five flames worth of hot. Why don't you come around and abduct me sometime? Next up, Black Peppa, who's 29 and from Birmingham, but originally from the Caribbean. And this bitch had me completely dead when I was watching the Meet the Queens because she explains that her drag name is Born From Loving Spices, Pepper, and Peppa the Pig, who if you don't know had a viral clip years ago, and she's talking to her friend Susie on the phone, asking her if she knows how to whistle, because Peppa Pig can't and wants to learn how. Susie then effortlessly whistles, there is some silence on the phone, and Peppa Pig hangs up. And to not only explain this clip on your Meet the Queens promo, but to have your drag name be named after the iconic Peppa Pig. I love her. I love her for this. This is a queen who just based off her interview being extremely relatable and down to earth and seeing her look being the insanely high fashion, incredible look that it is, 
girl, I'm gonna place my bets on final three, final four right now. Her look has to be one of the most beautiful of any promo shot ever. It's inspired by the brown pelican, the national bird of St. Martin, the Caribbean island she's from, and it's just, I mean, come on, absolutely breathtaking with all of those layered jewels, feathers, textures, sparkles, glittering, and oh my God, the attention to detail unmatched. This look is hot. And by the way, her Instagram is full of more fashion, beauty, and insane drag. I can't wait to see what she does on this season. And next up, we've got Pixie Polite, who's 29, from Brighton, and describes herself as the Belle of Brighton. And she reveals there's quite a bit of drag race nepotism happening this season, as she is the drag sister of Something Wong, Bag of Chips, and Tia Coffee, also revealing that she dated Tia Coffee. She says she can sing, dance, do comedy, yada, yada, yada. I'm getting very entertaining. You want her to host the party type of drag queen, and is yet another self-proclaimed camp queen. Girl, they're gonna need to bring some tents for this season. Her look is tapping into those retro futuristic Judy Jetson Hooker kind of vibes, but make it Fabergé egg. The partial hoop cage skirt I think is a fun detail and a great contrast to this relatively simple bodysuit that also has some pretty crazy shoulder pads on it. And while this isn't the craziest or most in your face look here, I think she did a great job of presenting something pretty simple and pixie polite. I'm gonna give this a three flame and next up, the literal doll of the season. Look at this queen. This is Dakota Shipper, who is 22 and from Sussex. I cannot believe that she's real. And she's not just perfect in this promo photo, but in all of her other Instagram ones. She's got a very clear aesthetic and perspective that she approaches drag with. She describes herself as 90s does 60s, saying her icon is Sharon Tate. And girl, she took that and ran all the way to the bank with it. And I love it. She is, I guess, what some of these queens might call a look queen. I don't see tons of stuff, for example, of her in the clubs or out and about like some of her peers tonight. She also is proudly the first trans contestant of the Drag Race UK franchise. And her look is gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, this is a very interesting way, I think, to approach a classic silhouette. She's got soft pastel color blocking, chunky heels, and some feathery hems on her sleeves. This look is obviously hot, but the big question mark I think remains, how will she apply this cute little aesthetic to the cutthroat competition that drag race can be, which is to ask how much of her talent is beyond the valley of the doll. Next up. <laughs> Thank you, that was my impression of a trumpet. We've got Le Phil. She describes herself as a singing, dancing Chinese pop star, the androgynous Asian sensation, and highlights that she does music gigs entwined with stories and performance art where the sets are sculptures, the costumes are couture, and the show is a piece of live art. Girl, show me where I can buy a ticket. I'd like to see it. Le Phil is 36 from Yorkshire and inspired by the brass band of her hometown. Obviously, she's got trumpet horns on her shoulders and the dress itself is like a marching uniform of sorts combined with even the bottom part of her dress looking like the head of a horn. Would you call the top of the horn part the head? Music people, let me know. And this queen talks herself up pretty loudly. She is clearly there to make an impression. And I love, I love confidence. And with this interesting way she approaches her drag, great personality and maturity, interest in music, I'm sure she will do well in this competition. This look is major and <laughs> Next up, Copper Top who's got two P's in her last name. And girl, I'd settle for just one at this point. Who is 38 and from Cheltenham. Miss Coppertop is yet another self-described campy queen. She says her drag is pantomime. It's camp. It's her being a ginger. And Miss Coppertop comes off very comfortable and in control when she's on camera. I think tapping into that theater background. Her drag character though, she says, is fairly new to the world being only several years old. And a lot of her drag scrolling through her Instagram appears to tap into that theater side. Very loud, large, productive production vibes going on, which follows through to her promo look, which is an homage to the Neptune statue in Cheltenham. And this look has some pros and cons. I love the contrast of her copper top with that blue dress, but I don't think she needed the back of the wig to be coming down to the front. All those curls on top of her head are really pretty and I think speak for themselves. And the look overall is I think more interesting when viewed from the waist up or when she's sitting and her legs are sticking out from the slit. And it kind of breaks up that almost bedsheet like swallowing that's happening with the drapey fabric. And Copper's look, comparatively speaking, I don't think is as refined as some of her competition, but I like that it displays exactly who she says she is, a campy theater queen. So I'd leave this look with a warming 
So those are our new girls. What do you think? I think they all did an incredible job. It was a great promo in Meet the Queens and the level of talent across this cast, I predict will be killer. And this season's going all out. The guest judges as reported by whattowatch.com will be Joanna Lumley, Allison Hammond, Hannah Waddingham, Boy George, Lorraine Pascal, Mel B, Wow. Ollie Alexander and my personal favorite on this list, FKA Twigs. And finally, as for my hottest part of the promo shoot, I'm gonna give it to Black Peppa. I also asked my patrons over on patreon.com to vote for their hottest hot, and they've chosen Black Peppa as well. Don't forget, you can help support the Bussy Queen channel by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where I release exclusive content like reaction videos and where you'll get access to things like the Bussy Queen Discord server. And new to the channel, I've just activated YouTube memberships. So if you click the join button next to the subscribe button, you'll get exclusive channel perks like membership badges right next to your name, showing how long you've been a member of the channel, special emojis you can use in the comment section. And you can even get your name in the description of my videos by joining the bus driver tier. Finally, you want to give an extra special shout out to today's video sponsor, Cometeer. Don't forget to click the link in the description of my video to get 25% off your first two orders of the best and most convenient coffee you'll ever take. I also want to give an extra special shout out to Aiden the Individual, Ah, Leisha, Cyrus, Tiki, Fa, Leisha, Frankie, Hector Simancas, Jeffrey, Joseph, Kyle Hermes, Laura, Asad, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Luke Peterson, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matto, Michelle, Your Bell, Miss F, Neely, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Travis, Lundy, Wheelie, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.